Okay. I... Maybe my clothes aren't very appropriate because I'm not gonna party all night, but I really wanted to make this video. First of all, <laughs> hello, welcome to my channel, welcome to a new extra vlog. This is filmed on Saturday the 15th of May. I am sorry that I haven't uploaded regularly lately, um, but the last few months have been crazy. I've worked very hard on my home and also uh, at work. But today I have a day off because I actually had to be in Germany um, for a trip and we aren't allowed to go to Germany uh, because of the current situation. So I'm here <laughs> at home. Um, but I didn't have work. That's why I have a little bit more time, which is good, because that means I can finally edit and hopefully from now on I'll have regular uploads. Um, but today I was sitting here on the couch actually and I was just staring into that wall <laughs> and um, thinking about a traumatizing experience of mine and how that affected me and I don't know I was like I have never really shared that with anyone really not even with my parents um, like most of it they know but not everything and I was like do you know what let's look up when is a mental health awareness month when is mental health awareness week and then I might share this story and then it turned out May is mental health awareness month and this week is <laughs> mental health awareness week and I was like oh maybe this is a sign so let's go and start this story as you may or may not know I have been depressed a couple of times in my life I've also struggled with mental health issues like all my life uh, and I've also seen therapists and stuff since I was seven. So that's a huge part of my life and I'm quite confident talking about it um, lately, especially with like close friends or family members, but there's one but, and I've never really said that. My depression had ups and downs, um, like most depressions. And back in 2013, I um, was also depressed, but I just, I went to school and I had friends and stuff, but I had, the main reason why I was depressed like the cause is because I first of all that's just a part of who I am uh, I am someone that can get depressed easily that's just how it works um, secondly I've been bullied in school so that was a huge part why I was depressed and last but not least I have lost nine people in seven years um, and six of those didn't make it to 20. So I don't know, there was a part of me that just couldn't cope with all of that and that made me want to die too, actually. But yeah, I wasn't ill or I don't know <laughs> nothing was happening to me where well, I would have died so I was thinking about suicide it didn't happen luckily something else that did happen was the summer of 2013 2013 however you want to call it before that summer actually I had a friend and he 
was my best friend. Like he was the best guy. Shout out to him. I know he doesn't watch my videos, but it's his birthday today. So <laughs> now that I think about it. Um, but he, we weren't boyfriend and girlfriend because he had a girlfriend, but he, I loved him. He was there for me whenever I needed him. I could call him every single day on WhatsApp. He checked if I was okay. Like he would talk to like two o'clock um, when I fell down. If I said stuff like I can't do it, then he said no, you can. If I said I don't believe in myself, then he said well, you should because I believe in you. Like stuff like that. He was the best guy, and he. Um, had put so much time and effort and love into making me feel better about myself and gaining confidence and stuff. With that said, in the summer of 2013, um, there was a weekend and I was invited to a dance performance. That performance was like epic, huge performance. It wasn't, I wasn't the one dancing, but I was invited to uh, be in the audience. And that same day, I was also invited to a party with some friends and some people I didn't know um, because, you know, they knew those people. I didn't know them. That's how parties work most of the time but I don't know I I really wanted to go to the dance performance but I was also like you know I am getting better mentally I've never really been to a party because I'm always like no nah, that's not for me um so I was like do you know what I'm just going to that party how bad can it be <laughs> um no well, really bad so it wasn't close to my home, so like normal that we could have gone by bike, but it was also in the evening and we were like 13 or 14 years old, so we were like, you know what, we gonna ask one parent to bring us by car and then we can travel together. <laughs> so we did, um, one friend one friend, her dad, I guess, brought us. I don't even remember, actually. <laughs> we just uh, went to that party. And at first, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't... Shush. It wasn't much fun either, but it's just, it's not really what I like. So I was like, you know what, it's the start of the party. I should enjoy it a bit. People were <laughs> taking drugs and they were smoking and drinking and all that um i don't do that but it did affect the entire party atmosphere um if that makes sense um and after a while i have no idea how many hours later but after a while some people started noticing that I was a very vulnerable person um, and they started with saying things about me that were very painful. Um, actually, sometimes they said it towards me, sometimes they said it about me whilst I was there. Um, and after a while I went inside, uh, inside a building and then a couple of guys, like actually quite a lot of guys, um, I didn't, I don't know if they already, if they were already there or that they came in after I did, but I don't know, we were there, like they were there and I was there and I didn't know what to do, so I just sat on my couch 
and then they started sitting next to me and then on top of me and then um, you know, they said things about me that I didn't want them to say they started touching me even though I didn't want to I didn't do much about it because I had no idea what to do also I had very low self-esteem so I didn't want to make a scene, I didn't want, I don't know, I, I just didn't know what to do and I, I don't know, I was just there and I was waiting till the moment was over, actually, I waited till the moment was over, I went outside to look for my friends and when I found my friends, I said I wanted to go home and then they said, well, we are having fun so we're not going home yet. And now that I think about it, I'm like, well, you, you can just walk away and take a bus or whatever. But, I don't know, I was there with my friends. We came there with a car and I thought like we have to go back by car. Also taking a bus, like I was 14, I didn't really do that often because I always go everywhere by bike so I, I don't know, I, I thought I had to wait till the party was over and I waited till the party was over or semi over like when my friends were like oh let's go home um, so we went home when I got home I started thinking a lot and I texted that best friend and I, I said I wasn't doing well and he was like, well, what's going on? And then I said horrible things about myself such as um, that, I, that I wanted to die because I am the most ugliest person in the world that's like I don't deserve any love and all of that and um, I actually I really understand his reaction but all I needed was love and was like people telling me that I was enough and that I was worthy of love and he became angry because he was like well I've put so much time and effort and love into making you feel better I've done that for months and now you say all of those things about yourself like why why do you do that and I was in shock I was in shock by him being angry at me because he, he he never acted that way, actually. And um, I just I went off social media and didn't go to school. Just the only people I um, was talking to were were my parents. After that. And then like a week and a half later, I um, started to be in contact with the world. I also checked on that friend. I said like, I'm so sorry, I know you've worked so hard for me and now I say stuff like that. And he's like, he was like, I'm also sorry. But I just, I just don't understand it. I just don't understand how you can think like that, and it makes me. I don't, I, just, I don't have to, to, the power to change it, and I felt so bad for him because he, he meant so much to me. Like he. He 
might be the one. Oh wow. He might be one of the reasons why that I'm still here and he doesn't know that like I've said it a thousand times I'm so grateful but he he was like yeah well that's what you do um well that's not I'm so grateful that he was there but that summer because it was at the start of summer that summer um I was very very depressed also we went on a trip on a vacation to Crete and I don't remember much of it it's like almost one big blur which is weird because I'm very good with remembering stuff um, but I just I wasn't I wasn't really there or something at September in school um, I went to a different class and that class was horrible almost every single teacher told the class that we were horrible like you're my least favorite class and uh, you're so unmotivated that I feel unmotivated to teach you um, because it was actually really really bad but all I needed was love and I just didn't really get it like I I got it from my parents and a couple of other people but it was a very hard time and um, I think it's very important to know that anyone can deal with stuff like this and you obviously know that like <laughs> you've heard I, I guess you've heard that a lot of times already but I have talked with my friend Luke um, last summer you might know him from other videos but we were together somewhere and we talked about this and about mental health and stuff and then he said the thing that was most dangerous about the way I reacted to my depression or like how I dealt with it was that nobody really noticed. I was always a very positive and happy person, always caring and always there for other people. Um, I wasn't the type of person that would sit there in a corner being quiet or a very angry person. I did do self-harm kind of things but not in a way that people would see it. I don't know. I just, I felt like Why would I make someone else's life miserable, actively, when I already make their lives miserable passively by being in their lives? Like, that's how I felt and I was like... I, those people, even though they're not, not everybody around me is my friend, but everybody is worthy of love and you never know what people are going through so I was like I need to be there for them and it's, I already make their lives worse by being in their lives because I am a horrible person so I'm there for them and that's what I've always done and even right now when I 
luckily don't think like that anymore. I still feel the need to be there for other people. That's something that's just within me. But I hope that you, as you're watching this right now, start to look out for other people too. Even though you might already do that, it's like those tiny things. Um, so I don't know, you're waiting for a train and someone loses something that doesn't look very important to you. But you see it, just grab it and be like, hey! Or you're working on a project in school with someone else and you don't really know that person but you do have some one-on-one -on -one time together because you're working on the project and then just check on each other like hey how are you doing are you okay and are you actually okay when you notice that people are a bit depressed or down um just share some love you don't have to say like i know you're not doing well but just share love because that's what they need the most um, also, I have two people quite close to me, both of them had an eating disorder, but back then it was like a secret. They were like, nothing's going on, but I knew something was going on. And with both people, I have sent them a letter saying like, I don't know, I see what you're doing and I love you and I, I can't just sit here and do nothing about it because you're so worth it. Mental health is such wide, like in so many ways people can be suffering um, and it's definitely not all the same. So. To spread awareness and sometimes to share a personal story too, um, I think that's very important. And because it was such a coincidence <laughs> that I, or maybe it wasn't, who knows, um, that I thought of that today and that apparently it is Mental Health Awareness Month and Week right now. Um, I had to share this story with you. I hope you're doing well. I hope you know that you are loved and you are so worthy of love. So, and that you are so worthy of love. I just wish you all the best and take care.